Hello everybody, finally! Finally! We're back, training camp nearly upon us. It is time to start grafting out some content for you boys. It has been way too long. We've got to reset the bar. We've got to come back bigger, better than ever. That means more live streams. It means more content. We've got to really send this into the new season. I know you guys are excited. I'm sorry I've been away. I explained that in a video uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Since then, I was meaning to come back last week, but over here, COVID's been a bit of a nightmare and I had to self-isolate for about 10 days because I came into contact with someone that also had it. So all good over here, but I couldn't get to the office and actually use the equipment that I've got because... Well, COVID sucks, but the thing I wanted to do was go over the battles this training camp, go over every single position, highlight the players I'm excited to watch, those I'm not excited to watch, and all the in-between. going to start at the most important position on the roster. It's quarterback. There are only three names. It's a nice, quick video, but there's still plenty to talk about. There's a lot of depth here in terms of conversation and in terms of the actual talent on the roster. So before we get into it, if you are new around here, if you're returning and you're with a vengeance, wondering how I've deserted you this offseason maybe don't subscribe to be fair the channel doesn't deserve it you know it's our road to redemption but if you could leave a like that would be fantastic Jalen Hurt is where we're going to start this video what can we expect this training camp from Jalen Hurt and I think a lot of it is going to be just getting familiar because you've got Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni both of them very very young in their coaching careers and Jalen Hurt's obviously only a second year player himself Nick Mullins isn't much further along in his development but there's a real sense of youth in this room and that both affords opportunity to Jalen Hurts. It also affords a lot of growth to Jalen Hurts. Because everything's so new, because everyone's so young, because it is a fresh page, we can expect some teething problems, you know? I know a lot of you guys love what Elliot Shaw Parks does when it comes to charting the quarterbacks and going over the training camp touchdowns and interceptions. I wouldn't pay too much mind to that this offseason. No offense to Elliot here, but I think in terms of what we see from Jalen Hurts, it doesn't really matter what we see production-wise. Like, I don't care if he starts throwing and loads of interceptions because at the end of the day it's all about getting acclimatized now there's a new group of wide receivers he's got a new number one target here the offense is going to run slightly different the terminology is going to be different the principles are going to be slightly different what i'm looking for more than anything is just consistency i want to see how the offense looks i want to see when we get to preseason how much of an rpo basis is there are they going to allow jalen hurts to get outside the pocket do they want to maybe conform him a little bit to take away that athleticism but to get him more comfortable staying in there because if you go back Back to last year, he was running for his life nearly every single play. You've now got a very healthy offensive line. Most of those pieces are back and should be near their best. And at the very minimum, this should be a good offensive line. At best, it should be a great offensive line. And that's going to give Jalen Hurts some comfort. And out of habit, it might just be that you're scrambling for your life to begin with. And on the back of that, going through progressions. You can't do that if you're constantly running for your life. Getting him in the pocket, going through his progressions, coming off that first read, scanning the rest of the field and making sure there is no meat on the table before darting off and trying not to pay the bill. That's what I want to see from Hurts this offseason. Just a bit of development in his game to go from a first year quarterback running for his life with a few flaws to someone that's a bit more well-rounded, a bit more steady and a bit more composed, ready, able to sit back and do a five-step drop and wait and wait and then go as opposed to just darting off. The next man up is Joe Flacco. And look, I've said it on this channel. I've said it in a million articles that I was not happy with the Joe Flacco signing. Because in my head, I wanted a mentor for Jalen Hurts. I wanted... For lack of a better word, a Chase Daniel figure. Now, I wasn't a big Chase Daniel fan, mainly because he milked the cow just as much as Sam Bradford. But I do think that that mentorship was valuable to Carson Wentz. Joe Flacco doesn't bring that. And you go back to Lamar Jackson, didn't get on. You go to Drew Locke, didn't get on. You go here, his first press conference, as I predicted, which exactly what happened. He said, oh, I'm here to win a spot. I'm here to help the team win. I'm not here to mentor Jalen Hurts. And you know what? Fair play. I was wrong. Like I said, I spoke to Joe Flacco a couple of weeks ago for a feature over on phillysportsnetwork.com. And the one thing that stood out was that he believes 
he can win. He believes he can win the starting role. And what do we know about Nick Sirianni? He wants a quarterback competition. He wants it to be earned. Now, whether that's Jalen Hurts or not, he wants that starting spot to be earned. Now, the good thing with Flacco is that he has started with every team he's been on. Last year wasn't particularly brilliant, but even in that game against the New England Patriots, he showed some real signs of that former Flacco. The guy who can still sling it 60 yards so effortlessly. And I think if we see a little bit of that, especially especially with such a young group, then there is a chance that if Jalen Hurts is a little bit rocky after preseason, if he isn't at his best, that we do see some flack out early on. And that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Thing. Knowing how Nick Sirianni built that Colts offense around Philip Rivers, knowing how it was built and predicated on the run, Flacco's going to be a game manager if he is in a situation where he's going to start. And I think that's important because there are so many weapons in the backfield. There's a lot of depth outside now. You do technically still have two franchise tight ends to throw to. I think he'd be all right. So I want to see him breathe down Jalen Hurts' neck. He's talked the talk. He said he grew up across the road from the Eagles stadium that all his friends were Eagles fans. He played for Delaware. He comes home, instantly signs a partnership to create new job opportunities for the Keystone area. That's huge. He wants to be here. He wants to win. And I think that is the exact type of competition that Jalen Hurts needs. There is no best or worst case scenario here because the best man's going to win the job. I'd love to see Hurts win it. I also want to see Flacco pressure him. I want to see Jalen Hurts deal with that adversity as he's done his whole career. He's no stranger to a quarterback battle, bear in mind. And I think this will be no stranger. He should be able to handle Joe Flacco without too much drama but I want to see what Flacco's got left in the tank because I came away a little bit inspired a little bit resetted after speaking to him a couple of weeks ago and thirdly the wild card here is Nick Mullins and you've got to contextualize this because if in your head Joe Flacco could be starting by week one I think he'd start by the end of the year but at least starting in week one then technically Nick Mullins could as well like, there isn't that much of a drop-off between Flacco and Nick Mullins. The only thing to be wary of with Mullins is the injury concern. Obviously, he's coming off of a season-ending injury, but over the past three years, he has started 16 games for the San Francisco 49ers. And in that time where they have been dredged in injuries and their depth has been depleted and their quarterbacks have been running for their lives, he's done better. You know, he's shown flashes. He's won games. He's got the Niners into winning positions. This is a guy at the end of the day that broke Brett Favre's records at Southern Mid. That's hard to do, all right? This isn't just anyone. He can play to that level. He's got that gunslinger about him. A little bit like Jalen Hurts, though. What hurts him are those short throws in the middle of the field. He doesn't quite have the zip there. Holds on the ball a bit too long. Can make bad decisions. Doesn't have the requisite athleticism to get out of the pocket when pressured. And that can lead to all kinds a problem some easy sacks some fumbles some poor throws it's just managing things a bit better but Mullins is younger he's got a higher upside than Flacco for sure and if Flacco can start technically I think we can see something special here from Nick Mullins and at the very least secure himself a roster spot somewhere else. But ultimately, I think this is Jalen Hurts' job to lose. The team have clearly built around him. They've done so with the right mentality and now they've got a coach in who can rally the troops behind. I think this is going to be a big summer for Jalen Hurts. Hopefully he comes out and wins that QB1 role. But what do you guys want to see? What are you looking for? Let me know down in the comment section below. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you next time.